I'm Leslie Kale Villarreal and I'm in the studio today and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about textures with your rolling mill. There's lots of fun ones out there and you can see them in all the uh, jewelry maker books and uh, lots of videos as well on how to use your rolling mill to get some beautiful textures on metal. Uh, one of the newest things I found is how to use embossing powder with a heat gun just like you would do on cardstock when you make a greeting card um, and then you can put that transfer use it as a pattern and put that transfer into your mill and I'd like to show you how to do that um, I'm also going to explore some other uh, ways that I texture my metal so let's get started so the things you're going to need for the first technique would be a heat gun now you can get these um, at Home Depot they make professional ones or the little um, crafters kind from Michaels Papyrus or Joanne Fabrics carries them you can find them on Amazon and they run about $19. You might be able to find them cheaper with a coupon. Um, anyway, and then some Versamark clear ink is what I use. You can use embossing pens also. Basically, it's a type of glue. It's, you know, rubber stamp. This one's clear. And it's a type of adhesive that, we're, that we need. So embossing pens, um, this isn't one, but they would look like a regular pen. And then as, as you push them, the glue kind of runs through so you can write your design. It would be clear. Um, and then you would cover it with the embossing powder. The embossing powder comes in a million colors. Um, the ones I happen to have on hand are gold and glitter black sparkle. I'm going to use the gold one today and hopefully you can see this all right on the camera. But the first thing you need to do is get your rubber stamp collection out and decide which one you want to use. Um, you also, like I have a lot of these loose red rubber stamps from um, PMC, my PMC days, and which I still do occasionally, and I don't want to ruin those stamps. So what I do is I just take them and I use some double stick tape and stick them to one of my stamp pads so that I can get some pressure when I'm applying this one. So for the, for today I'm going to use this texture, and we're going to be uh, working on 20 gauge copper today, and I'll show you the process. So you want to start with a clean piece of paper because we're going to be pouring embossing powder all over this. We want to make sure we have a clean surface. So after we're done, we can pour it back into our little jar. So I'm going to start with a, a card stock. And I'm, this is actually someone's business card I'm going to use because it is card stock. And I'm going to lay it flat. Hopefully you can see this okay. And then I'm, now this is all going to be clear. You're not going to be able to see it too well because the ink is clear. But you'll see it once I start to heat it up. So I'm going to take my Versamark pad. Back up just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to take my stamp design and I'm going to um, coat it nicely onto the pad. So I got a nice sticky tacky surface. And then I'm going to stamp onto my card this what clear glue. And before I lift it off, I'm going to get my embossing powder ready. And I'm going to coat the whole card with embossing powder. And don't worry, I'm not actually wasting it. I'm going to pour that back into the jar. Immediately cover up your stamp pad so it doesn't get dry. Now I'm going to take this embossing powder and I'm going to dump it back into the jar. And whatever's left will go into this paper, which I can then dump it back into the jar. So I'm not wasting any of it. So now once again, I have a nice clean surface. And let's go back to that embossed card we just did. So it looks like this right now. It looks kind of glittery and splotchy. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to zoom in for this part. So I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to apply heat and what it's going to do is it's going to melt the glue and the glitter together to make kind of a plastic surface. And you just, it will start to get dark when it starts to melt. You just kind of got to keep your eye on it. It doesn't take very long. I can see now it's getting glossy and dark. It's coming out nicely. And 
You don't want to go over it too long. You just want to go until it turns and it heats and it sets. Otherwise, you'll be melting it. So now I don't know if you can see. I'm going to try to focus this better. But I've got a, kind of a raised, glossy surface on this card. It's textured. Back out a bit. I don't know if you can really capture that it, it's shiny and textured. There we go. Now you can see how it's kind of shiny and textured. Okay, so this is now going to be a texture plate. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of metal, a piece of copper for today, and I'm going to lay it over the top of this. And I'll trim this off. So I don't want a lot of excess. I'll decide where I want my design to be. And I'm just going to trim it down. And leave just a little bit on the end, around the outsides. So that's the part, this is the part of the design I'm going to transfer onto my metal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sandwich around this with another card. So I'll just take a piece of blank cardstock and I'm going to sandwich it in between like so. And then I'm going to run this through my rolling mill. Now I'll actually do this and you can watch me do it. Also just a quick note about uh, using metals in your rolling mill. Please make sure that if you're going to anneal your metal, which you definitely should do, um, I'm using 20 gauge today and I have annealed it. Make sure that you take it to the sink and you scrub it with some uh, pumice or some soap and a, and a brass brush or some baking soda. You want to get off all that pickle because the citrus pickle or, or Spare X or Rio pickle, whatever you're using, will pit the rollers on your rolling mill. So please make sure that you clean that really good before you stick it into your mill. So that's, that's already been done. Now we're going to go over to the mill. Now... Everybody says that they have a formula for how you should get this to go through. My formula is strictly by feel. So I've got mine set right now, so it's pretty tight. If I try to roll this through, it's a little bit too tight. So I'm going to open it up until I can slide it through. Okay, now I can slide it through. Now I'm going to make it tight so it's really hard to pull out. And I'm going to notice where it is. I'm at about an uh, 11 on my dial. So I'm going to back that out, and I'm going to go to an 11, and then I'm going to add 15. Now if that still doesn't feel tight enough, which usually it doesn't, I might turn it a little more as I start to roll. That's going through pretty easy. I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit more, another 5, and I'm ready to roll. There we go. I'm going to actually tighten it a little bit more, it still feels a little bit loose all the way through there and I like to get a little bit of a bend in my metal and then I'm going to bring it back through the other way some people don't do it that way some people do it's totally up to you now what you're going to get is a light impression you're not going to get a super dark one with this method I don't know if you can see that but I'm pleased with it I like it very much it's a nice light impression and um, I'm going to take you now over to my bench and I'm going to show you some more other ones we did. So I'm going to show you a few other pieces I made with this method um, using various stamps. Um, so I used this stamp, which I like. That's the design on it. And I was able to get these impressions. Once you put some um, patina in there, you're going to see it a little bit better. So I rubbed a, just a tiny bit in there. Here's another one done with the same stamp. And again, these are pretty light, um, but they're great for background texture. You know, if you just want to maybe mount some stones onto something or just have a little bit of background. They're not deep at all, but they're kind of equivalent to what you would get from something from Rolling Mill Resource. Um, those nice texture pattern papers that she makes, which I, I like those very much too. Um, okay, so something else I wanted to show you that's kind of cool is I don't know if you have ever tried punching out little shapes um, like with these little Fiskars punches. So what you can do is you can just take and punch out a little crown or heart or fleur-de-lis or whatever you like 
and what I did with this one, this is a little crown, I laid it on top of a piece of watercolor paper and a piece of steel or copper and I put it in my mill, sandwiched it between two pieces of paper and this is what I got. It's pretty deep, it looks good. So layering, um, you can do lots of layers of stuff, you know, and you could glue it in place with a um, glue stick or whatever if you want to hold it down or you can put a piece of uh, painter's tape behind it and then lay your pieces on, your, your cut out pieces on there and then put your metal on top to hold it all and wrap it again, sandwich it between two pieces of cardstock and put it through your mill. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, some of you have been interested in some textures that I've gotten with lamp banding and I just want to show you what that looks like. So lamp banding, you usually buy in one foot strips from lamp banding suppliers. It looks like this. It comes in steel or brass. Um, and this is one pattern that I have. And I just cut a little piece of it off and I put it through my mill and this makes some very deep, thick textures, which I love. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but you can actually even see the detail in the grid screen in the back. So yeah, lamp banding rocks. It's really, really good. It's great too with sterling in, if I'm gonna do like some 18 gauge or something, I, I like to use something thick, but for 20 gauge, the lighter textures are good. Um, but there's a lot of detail. I don't know if you can really see all that detail. Pretty awesome. This is some rings that I make and sell on Etsy, and these are also made with lamp banding, and there's some beautiful texture on there, too. I don't know if you can really see that, but that's, that's the idea. Um, another great place to find lamp banding that nobody else has is to go to, like, to a flea market or antique stores, and you find a little pieces of steel or parts or brass or... Um, little objects that have a lot of texture in them and think about those for your mill start picking them up like scrap pieces and then saving them and you might find some use for them um, and one of my secrets that I won't tell my husband about is I like to use my underwear <laughs> the lace pattern works great in the mill and since my dog Daisy likes to chew these up she ruined them so I just cut a little piece off and I put it through my mill with a couple pieces of metal. And this was a fun design I got. Nice thick texture again. Well, the lace gives it really good texture. And then I, I just love how it turned out on my sterling. It almost looks like snakeskin or something. It's kind of neat, or tire tread. And here's another one. Different lace comes out differently, obviously, but it's, it's pretty thick. It's a nice texture. It's groovy. And you know, you can use things like twine and string and leaves, of course. I think everyone has tutorials out there, a lot of them on leaves. But um, get creative with your stamps and have some fun with your rolling mill and post some comments and some pictures of some of the things that you've made. I'd love to see them. So um, please subscribe me so you'll see all my new metalsmithing tutorials coming your way. And if there's anything you need to see that I haven't covered in one of my other six videos. I have intro to tools, um, making pendants and using the rolling mill for rolling sheet, lots of other stuff. But there's more fun stuff coming. So if you see anything um, you like, send me a high five and subscribe. See, I got patina on my fingers and it won't come off. Still here?